we bow our heads in prayer. Lord, as we come now to reflect upon a portion of your holy word, we pray that you will open our understanding, that you will guide our thoughts, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I speak to you on the subject, keep <laughs> focusing on Jesus. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. But we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. And Bonte, in the hymn 303, in Voices in Praise, verse 1, penned, Believe not those who say the outward path is smooth, lest you should stumble in the way and faint before the truth. Unquote. My brothers and sisters, our living experiences can be like a roller coaster ride with various challenges all threatening to derail our lives. We may be faced with, for example, a loved one being senselessly murdered or Someone getting sick with cancer, even though they daily eat and drink healthy foods. Or someone being an honest, hard-working employee, yet getting severed from their jobs. Or we might have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and living sincerely for him. Yet people continue to throw our pass at us. The truth is that these harsh realities are enough to crush us. However, we must overcome these storms. Our survival and our advancement as human beings placed here specifically by God are not any good luck gambling ventures. Rather, they depend on the foundation of our lives. We can't go through life gambling and just living by chances of one kind or another. Our lives must have a foundation. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27, Jesus emphasized this point as he taught. He pointed to a house built on rock as against one built on sand. In both cases, the rain fell, the flood came, and the winds blew upon the houses but only the one with the foundation of rock remained standing. The scripture readings that we had this morning from the book of Job and Mark were very important and present some issues for our consideration. In Job chapter 1, verse 1, and chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, the subject character is described as blameless and upright. Yet, my friends, he loses his health and is full of souls from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head. And if that was not bad enough, if you read the verses in chapter 1, you will recognize that before this calamity, 
that he had lost his children and all the material things that he owned. That is enough to send any of us mad. And certainly a lot of persons will say, God, I done with you because something has to be wrong here. That I serve you faithfully and this is what you do to me, God. But grounded in God, and despite the wrong advice by his spouse, Job remarkably declared in Job chapter 2 verse 10, Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In Mark chapter 10, and as we come to this Mark chapter 10, we'll recognize that over the past two weeks we were dealing with Mark chapter 9 and some very burning issues there. Here is Jesus as he turned his face towards Jerusalem. He knew the purpose for which he goes there. And as we go back to chapter 9, Jesus told his disciples how he will go to Jerusalem and he'll be arrested and tried and he'll be crucified and on the third day he will rise again. They didn't understand what he was saying but instead of asking him and seeking explanation, they are arguing among themselves who was the greatest. And we come all the way down and here was Jesus with this concern on his mind and the Pharisees sought to put Jesus to the test. And they put in Jesus to the test had a motive of getting him to say the wrong thing so they can bring a charge of blasphemy against him. They asked him a fundamental question about the family and married relationship. Furthermore, Jesus is confronted with his disciples being harsh towards the children. And Jesus rebuked the children. Rebuke, sorry, Jesus rebuked the disciples and he blessed the children. Let me repeat that for clarity. Jesus rebuked the disciples and bless the children. And I want to pause here to say thank you to the leaders of this congregation for allowing the two young children from the Sunday school to read the scripture today. Since during the month, they're mainly out in their Sunday school area. So here are these situations Enough to ruin Job's life and enough to disturb Jesus and to move him away from that which he had to do. And when we look beneath the surface, beneath the surface, the several issues that come to the fore show how vulnerable we are, how we are apt to fall into a state of relapse and drift away from God, thereby making us spiritually dead. I don't know of many persons who sit down home and say, Lord, I'm going to walk away from you in December. I don't know of many persons who do that. But folks, as the issues come to us, day by day, we can start feeling a certain way against God and we stop our devotions, we stop our constant communication with him in prayer, we become lazy to come to Bible study, we decide that on Sunday morning it's better to remain in bed and sleep 
And all we are in fact doing is drifting away and drifting away from God. And then when we realize it, we don't even know how to come back. And the truth is, God is ready to welcome us back. We just have to come back to him. But that is how life works. And we have to guard against that. And we have to keep our aim on Jesus. So in the midst of everything that you may be facing today and that I may be facing today and against the background of scripture, you may ask me, what is expected of us amidst life depressing challenges? Keep focus on Jesus. I want to guide you on three things relating to that. Jesus is life's core. Jesus is life's alignment. Jesus is life's anchor. One, Jesus is life's core. The core of something is its most important and central part. Regarding life, God is the core of our lives and he intends for us to live a life that is full. And Jesus, the manifestation of God in our message says in John chapter 10 verse 10, I come that you may have life and have it abundantly. God don't want us to drift through life. God don't want us to be limping along where we hate life and we wish that it will end. For every day that God has blessed us with, he wants us to live life fully. And he's at the core of that life. Be aware that this sacred opportunity will be no more than a self-gratifying activities if God is denied and he's not at the core of who you are and what, what we are and what we do. If we decide to deny the presence of God and have nothing to do with him, and so something else is at the core of our lives, we will never live life fully and meaningfully. For the Christian, you and I, God reveals himself to us in Jesus Christ. And I saw Jesus as evidence as the core of life. Hebrews chapter 1 and the latter part, and the, sorry, Hebrews chapter 1 and the first part of verse 3, we read, He, Jesus, is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustained all things by his powerful word. I want to say to us that life is worth living when we live it in and for Jesus. Whether you're male or female, young or old, life is worth living when you and I live our lives in Jesus and for Jesus. And don't think that because you're living a life in and for Jesus, that you have to abandon your education, that you have to go and sell your house and live on the streets, that you can't share socially with other persons, 
that you can enjoy your favorite game, that you can have a cordial and wholesome conversation with your friends. God is not interested in stopping us from doing those things. God just asks that whatever we do bring honor, brings honor and glory to his name. And we must avoid the inclination to regard this fact about God as cliche. And we see life as just presenting an option where we choose one thing against the other, like how someone will go into a boutique, male or female boutique, and choose a clothing style. That is not this matter about God at all. Folks, the choice with God is either we accept God or we surrender ourselves to the devil. There ain't no, there ain't no equal choice. You leave one and you go to the next. It is either we stay in God or we damage our lives in the hands of Satan. And we ignore that fact. And we take Jesus for granted at our peril. So we have the seed given being the core to the mango plant, the mango fruit. And we love mangoes different styles and different variety of mangoes. We love them. But a kind of seed determines the particular fruit. And I want to say to us that Jesus gave substance to our lives in the same way the seed gives substance to the mango fruit. Yes, Living on earth will bring its constant challenges. You're not going to be able to escape it. We have to prepare ourselves that someday we may be flat on our back. Or someday something else may happen to us. And that is simply because we live in a world that is stained by sin. But... With God being the core of our lives, we are not crushed. And that is important. No matter what you go through, don't let it dis destroy you. Have hope because you are in Jesus with him being the core of your life. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on tight. In the midst of the roller coaster ride of life, keep focusing on Him. Don't be distracted. And I want to tell you, you will come through any situation. And that is why we can hold on to that very well-loved verse that he will never leave us or forsake us. Two, Jesus is life's alignment. Imagine going into a, a junkyard and seeing a disconcerting sight of everything thrown upon a heap and mixed up. It could be old cars, household items, anything at all. You just throw there and everything mixed up. If those contents were clean and aligned properly, that sight would become a worthy museum. Think about what I'm saying to you. 
when everything look mixed up and it looks like bare dump and it accumulating flies that makes any of us feel disconcerting but clean up the site align the things put the household things together and the other things together you will have a museum so what's the point the point is that that is exactly how it is with your life and my life life's main concern is not simply the challenging issues for the challenging issues will come no matter how committed we are to christ life's main concern is our mix-up state where for us anything goes and any order goes and it can be true because we rob ourselves of so much if for you a sunday morning makes no difference the effort was a saturday morning or friday morning something is wrong because in our culture the sunday morning represents our worship time of god if for you it doesn't matter how you spend this minute as against another one something is wrong because we should live our lives in company with god even if we walk through the valley of the shadow of death jesus as lies alignment put our lives in a ranking order where god is priority number one and the things of God is priority number one. God cannot be just by the way. God cannot be simply at our conveniences. God cannot simply come to the fore because we are suffering or because we are mourning. God has to be number one at every time of your life, every month of your life, every situation of your life. In our recent Bible study session on the Bible character Abraham, it came to the fore that in the varied situations he faced, he would often set up an altar and worship God. At the same place, depending on wherever he was at the time. And I found that to be so marvelous. Can you imagine you being here this morning, everything is cool in your life, and you're worshiping God? And on Wednesday morning, when somehow you feel yourself down in a dump, and you get up and worship God too. On Friday morning, when somebody break into your house and do something that they shouldn't do, you still worship God. You understand the point that I'm making. For when we align ourselves and God is number one, he remains number one regardless. And the truth is that our lives will be tremendously motivated if during each day we grasp opportunities to worship God even in silence. Look for those opportunities during the course of the day when you can lift up the name of Jesus and worship God. William Temple wrote thus about worship. To worship is to quicken the conscience by the holiness of God, to feed the mind with the truth of God, to purge the imagination by the beauty of God, to open the heart to the love of God, to devote the will to the purpose of God. 
But what happens on the other side? So let's flip the coin and see. When you and I chase after life issues, endeavoring to solve them in our own strength, we end up being tired, frustrated, and defeated. And you know what? Anger, selfishness, and impatience will come after us with resulting lashing out, fights, and crime. So we can't solve the problem by ourselves. So we worship God and we lift them up before him. And we say, Lord, I lay this situation before you for your ministering. Let Jesus align our lives. Thirdly, and lastly, Jesus is life's anchor. In the hymn 344, in the Methodist hymn, but in Voices in Praise, uh, a hymn we love so much, listen to how Priscilla Owens penned this verse. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife, when the strong ties lift and the cable strain, will your anchor drift or firm remain? In other words, she painted in that verse a stormy, rocky situation. I don't know if you have ever been in a boat when the sea is rough. I have been. It's not a good experience at all. In addition to you feeling sick and upset in your stomach, you're, you're being pushed all over the place. And you dare not stand up because you'll be sliding and falling all around. And she asked the question, Will your anchor drift or firm remain? And the question that I want to ask you as I ask myself, my brothers, my sisters, who and what are your life anchor? What is your anchor? Who it is that your life is anchored in? What is it that your life is anchored in? And the harsh reality is that for you to anchor your life in a person, no matter how much you think about them or a thing, it will, they will be inadequate. Simply because they are limited and they are only for time. Everything on the face of this earth is only for a time and it is limited. So please, don't anchor your life in anything that you own, like material things, or in your education, or rum, or anything at all, including your spouse. Love them, but don't anchor your life in them. Because they cannot do for you what Jesus can do for you. Anchor your life in Jesus. From ancient days, through the use of religion, human beings yearn after the supreme being, even though the methods that they use were incorrect. Some people would have used one thing against the nest, even putting up false statues and calling it, calling it God. All because they sought to be connected to the supreme being. And for you and for me, Jesus is our life anchor. 
because in Jesus there is hope there is peace and there is love Jesus anchors our life in a way that he helps us to fight against spiritual attacks Jesus anchors our life in a way that we are able to experience forgiveness of sins Jesus anchors our lives in a manner that we are able to experience him renewing us and recreating in us and when you and I ignore Jesus and try other things as our life anchor we leave ourselves exposed and the number one thing that we leave ourselves exposed to is spiritual attacks Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 for our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh but against the rulers against the authorities against the cosmic powers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places my brothers and sisters when we throw God out of our lives the devil take over and the devil destroys us and there are many times this is being evidence all across our world ask the people in the big year what is happening to them and I beg you never let it happen that we put God on the back burner and he say we don't need you God for we need him every day of our lives we need him And it is very crucial for Jesus to be our anchor for in Jesus we have eternal life not in anyone else nobody else on the face of this earth can give you eternal life the devil certainly can't give you eternal life it is in Jesus and Jesus made that abundantly clear in John 3 16 and so as we see Jesus through our eyes of faith and as we anchor our lives in him we are sustained God's grace is sufficient for us And so our lives which are anchored in Jesus we learn to trust him we build our faith in him we strive to obey his word and we allow the Holy Spirit to so enable us that we are filled and we produce spiritual fruit and the nine of them are listed in Galatians chapter 5 22 and 23 so then my dearly beloved brothers and sisters here at Kingston Methodist keep focusing on Jesus as we do so let us commit ourselves to Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior let us serve him faithfully by our sanctified lives and may God empower us by the enabling Holy Spirit in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen let us pray God, we thank you for your word. Minister to us from Holy Scripture.
We thank you, God, that you have shown us in your word that despite the challenges of life, despite the depression and, and crushed state that they can bring, yet our lives doesn't have to be depressed or we don't have to be crushed. We thank you, God, for your mercy which attends us. That you, through Jesus Christ, represents the very core of our lives. We thank you, God, that in Jesus Christ we are able to recognize you aligning our lives according to your will and purpose. We rejoice, O oh God, at the anchoring of our lives that Jesus brings so that we can live lives that are full and free and abundant, knowing that all will be well before our souls because Jesus is in our lives. So, Father, move us today to a higher level. So, Father, help us today to recognize that living in you and living for you is not an option, but it's really what we must do if we want to live fulfilled. So, bless us. Draw us unto yourself. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen.